Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is 5.30, Monday, October 7th. I'm going to call the Town of Morristown Select Board meeting to order. Do we have any agenda additions or changes? No. So minutes, we have four sets of minutes. We have minutes from uh, September 16th, 2024. I would move to approve the minutes of September 16, 2024. So I have a motion. Do I have second. a second? I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Are there any, is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the, to the uh, motion to approve the minutes from September 16th, 2024, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. We have minutes from the public hearing on 923. Um, I would make the motion uh, to accept the minutes with one correction of September 23, 2024. I was not present. I would be listed as absent because I was not here. Okay. Did have you, uh, do I have a second? I'll second. second. Okay. Did have you listed as present? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes from September 23rd, 20, uh, 2024, say aye. 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 We have minutes from September 30th, the public hearing. I would move to accept the minutes of September 30, 2024. Okay, I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes from September 30th, 2024, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. And finally, uh, on September 30th, we had a special meeting. We have minutes for that as well. I would move the minutes of September 30th, 2024. I have a motion. Second. A second. <laughs> so I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes from September 30th, 2024, say aye. 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 Okay, those are all unanimous, Judy. Good. Okay. So we have under new business tonight a um, couple of things that I'm kind of looking forward to. And the first of these is some recognitions and I have three separate recognitions and I guess I'm going to read these recognitions and when we're done I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, accept these rec recognitions and we have uh, several people in the room first is to recognize Jerry Throne and Evelyn Throne and Robert Clark and we sincerely we sincerely appreciate Jerry Throne Evelyn Throne and Robert Clark for their ex exceptional commitment to Morristown and community service demonstrated through their leadership of the EMS kitchen renovation project. Their project management, construction, expertise, and seamless coordination transform the space into a functional welcoming area that supports our first responders. Their meticulous attention to detail and adherence to time and budget constraints ensured the project's success. Thanks to their hard work and dedication, our EMS team now has a revitalized kitchen that enhances their ability to serve our community. We are truly grateful for their outstanding contributions to Morristown. Thank you very much, folks. I would further recognize Scott Nelson. We are pleased to present an on-the-spot award to Scott Nelson for his exceptional, exceptional dedication to training and mentoring new highway department employees. As an experienced Tech 3, Scott ensures that newly hired technicians understand the technical aspects of their roles while feeling welcomed and supported. His willingness to share knowledge, provide guidance, and offer encouragement has significantly boosted new employees' confidence and skill development. Through his exemplary teamwork, Scott has contributed to the Highway Department's success and fostered a positive, collaborative work environment. Thank you, Scott, for going the extra mile and exemplifying our team's values. Your, tr your efforts truly make a difference. Is Scott online by any chance? No, the plan is to uh, present the certificates um, some morning, early morning, to them in front of their, their team members. OK. 
Okay. And further, would you? I just want to say, Scott's a good boy. I've known him since he's been five years old. <laughs> Let the record show that Tony Tony Cody agrees. Even though, <laughs> even though five years old, he's six foot five and. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Further, I'd like to recognize Caleb Holmes and Shane Blesdale. We are thrilled to recognize two members of our highway department, Caleb Holmes and Shane Blaisdell, with an on-the-spot award for their outstanding dedication and teamwork in volunteering at the 2024 Rocktober, uh, Rocktoberfest event. Their willingness to step up on a Saturday exemplifies the spirit of community service and commitment to making Morristown a better place. From coordinating setup and teardown logistics with Gail Beck to ensuring everything was safely in place. Their hard work and positive atti attitudes were instrumental in creating a welcoming and celebratory, celebratory atmosphere for all attendees. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Shane, for your incredible efforts and for going the extra mile. Your contributions not only enhance our community, but also inspire others to get involved. We truly appreciate your dedication. And I'd like to say I was there early Saturday morning and these two individuals were there and they were there all day. They were there all day when I was there. I know I left a little bit early. I think they were there till the very end. So thank you very much, gentlemen. I would entertain a motion. I would move to extend our sincere appreciation and recognition to volunteers and staff recognized tonight who have gone, gone above and beyond with their efforts for the benefit of our community and authorize the chair of the select board to sign the certificate of recognition on behalf of the entire select board expressing the town's gratitude for their service. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 <clears throat> that would be unanimous. Uh, we have, so number two, we have uh, a scheduled select board meeting on November 4th, 2024, which is the day before the general election on the 5th. And has, as has been true in the past, um, we have canceled those meetings on Monday night just to allow the town clerk to prepare this room. So I would, uh, I guess, consider a motion at this point to uh, cancel that November 4th meeting. So moved. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by George to cancel the November 4th select board meeting due to the election on November 5th. Any discussion? Okay, good. All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Now number three, I for one, I'm looking forward to this. This is, uh, we, we've received a letter from the planning council and uh, in regards to a couple things, I think parking is one of the themes here. And I'm gonna let Etienne and or Todd present this to us. Um, the interesting thing is that number three and number four, although they're separate agenda items, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. So I think this conversation is gonna carry over from one to the other. Thank you, Todd. Good evening. I'll handle the first uh, handful of things and I'll pass, the, uh, pass it on to Mason for the larger traffic circulation design comments. That's his expertise. Uh, so I think the letter speaks for itself. Uh, for example, a couple years ago, we removed the bus stop on Pleasant Street. We're still striping out no parking in front of the bus stop. Those are three spaces we could put back and haven't been put back. So there are really low hanging fruit on Pleasant Street where we could enhance parking opportunities in downtown. I know some of the select board members were worried at the last meeting about giving the nephews a parking waiver to redevelop their building. Well, if we're worried about parking that much, we have to take advantage of our existing on-street available parking and not have things like a bus stop that's still striped up hasn't been there for two years. So these are kind of low-hanging fruit. So uh, if you look at number one on the letter, uh, the letter's on page 12 of your packet, uh, there are six spaces that can be striped in right now, six new public parking spaces just with a little road paint. Uh, number two, uh, a formal loading zone in front of MOCO would probably be a good idea to stripe that in and design it. Um, three, 
there's a really low catch basin, and I'm not sure, maybe it's at the height of its design, at the intersection of Hutchins and Pleasant Street, you really bottom out when one wheel kits it. That's something we should raise it up if we can. I'm sure a few of us have hit that one. It's pretty jarring. Uh, number four, one of the things we didn't expect at our meeting, so the Planning Council to back up held a really well-attended public meeting on Pleasant Street parking and surrounding areas. And what four came up with, which I personally agree with from my own personal experience, was the cut through traffic that avoids the intersection, that coming up from the Bijou, that bang it left in front of the post office, in front of here before the post office, cut through that parking lot, whip around the corner uh, to head back to Main Street. That's a really dangerous situation, and it would be the public that was there really asked for these parking lots to be separated, for the post office parking lot to be its parking lot and not allow the cut through traffic. For example, if you're coming from Pleasant Street, we don't allow parking, we don't allow drivers to come all the way from Pleasant to Portland. There's a do not enter sign. Simply putting up another do not enter sign on the back of the existing do not enter sign to separate them would really cure a lot of the bad behavior we're seeing. Um, and a lot of that ex concern was expressed by the preschool that's there, with the cars whipping around and people unloading their kids in the corner. Uh, they were very concerned about that. So Todd, just before you go on to number yep. five, I was thinking about this, um, and, and I really do appreciate everything that's in here, especially this one. So right now the parking is striped angled there. So we would have to uh, stripe that perpendicular, I would guess, right? On number four? Or? Yeah. If I'm understanding this right, so right now you drive in there, you got angled parking, and it would make for an awkward. Yeah, if it's striped turn. angled the other way, I think it's striped angled to come in. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, perpendicular. I mean, having it perpendicular would be helpful, yes. Yeah. Agreed. And yeah. Todd, the exit then would be back out through what now is the entrance? Uh, you could turn around that way, or you could take the left behind the Good Dog Grooming, behind that DeMars building, and come out through the parking lot that way. Okay, so it's not uh, a pure division from lot A to lot B. No, so it's, it could be signed. I mean, you could, the, the audience that was attending the planning council meeting talked about a physical separation just to make sure to, the bad, the bad, the bad drivers are going to blow through the do not enter. In theory, maybe they won't, but in theory they thought they would. But I don't, we could try just putting up the do not enter sign first and have people come around behind Good Dog Grooming, go out through the, mm. that little turnaround by the, lo the loading dock of Soulmate Brewing. Yeah. Having that turn, that meander, will cut the... Will Slow them, yeah. It will eliminate the people cutting through because we faster go through the intersection at that point. Yeah. And yeah. I think that problem got exacerbated when Hutchins Street became a one-way down the hill. Yes. And I'm not saying that was a bad decision. I'm just saying one of the outcomes of that was the people who used to usually use Hutchins Street as the cut. Bang the left, bang the right, now they're banging the left, banging the right through the post yeah, office. Yeah, right, just, they, they moved on to the post office. Yep, yep. exactly. Okay, thank you, for the, George, because I was thinking you'd go in and then have to go back out onto Which Portland I was Street. I don't think there's field. enough turnaround space to no, do that. No, no matter right. how you align right. those yeah, that, that, you're right, right around the building, go back out. Yeah, so I, we so we still would not go back out onto uh, Port, 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 Portland Street. You don't need to. We could okay. if you wanted to, but you don't need to. That was yeah. my concern, is yep. having people try to get back out into nope. there with... Yeah, uh, I think if we wound them through the parking lot, it exactly. would take some of the... Cut through. Hurry the out of it. Yeah. Agreed. Because it's going to be more of a won't pain be, than it's worth. It won't be quicker anymore. Take right. a lot of and, and honestly, yeah, I think it would. Honestly, you know, I don't think signage is going to change behavior because too nope. many people are accustomed mm -hmm. to not read signs and, and just would go through it because that's the normal course and has yep. been for yep. a number of years. So I think if, if the board is going to consider a change, you make the change and force that change and have it. Rather than delete that script, so. because I, we're going to get there regardless yeah. if, if we adopt this. Mm -hmm. so. I agree, Chris. Even hay bales is a temporary barrier, will work fine. That's not, doesn't cost much money. It costs $20 at Guy's Farm and Yard. You put a couple hay bales down and force them to see the do not enter signs go that way, that will teach the behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you tie in with the current thing that the pump does on the street. But my yes, question Lord. is uh, do we have any? Uh, these do not enter, are they enforceable by any zoning or permitting? That's police. So they, so technically a, a, uh, they could get a ticket for, for I, I would assume so. I don't want to speak for Jason or PD, but sure. I, I would assume a, a do not enter just like on a town road it would be the same in a town parking lot, but I'm not positive on that. Yeah, it could be one-way traffic too. Yeah, just to throw that out, or something. That, you know, it's, when we announce it, that by the way, you can, can get ticketed. Well, you, you, you leave up the no exit sign coming back out on Portland Street mm -hmm. and put up signage, exit this way, mm -hmm. and send people that way. Yeah. It's, 
Shouldn't be range surgery. Nope. So clear Should safety not. concern. It's not expensive. It's not hard to fix if we want to do something about it. Uh, number five. So we this, some of this discussion started with We Explorers, the preschool. There's 140 children that uh, come through that church uh, children's facility, the back building, uh, and the uh, old puffer church during a typical day. And what they wanted is they have those parking spaces in front of uh, where they drop off in front of the white building that's behind the puffer church. They wanted those signs just for them because they have a hard time with oh, right. mm -hmm. uh, parking and unloading kids and getting them into the preschool, people whipping around the corner. Um, unfortunately, those spots are about four feet into the town right away on the back end of your car if you're pulling into those spots. So one thing we could do if we wanted to, if, if, especially if they wanted to pay for it, if right now they have pavement and they have uh, curb stops for the front wheels, if they eliminated that and brought the curbs, the cars to the front of the pavement, eliminating the curb stops, they'd actually fit on private property outside the town right away. So that's a simple solution to allow them to do that. The planning council can't allow them to put up signs for uh, no parking, but you guys could. But either way, they could park on their own by just eliminating the curb stops and pulling all the way in. They'd have to choose between their landscaping and a sidewalk because they're losing their sidewalk at that point because they have that kind of walk behind the curb stop. Mm. Yeah. If you go and take a look, it'll make sense. So it's the curb stop on our property or their property? Their property. <laughs> they're just uh, where the curb stop is, all the cars hang out by about four feet into the, right, into the town right away. Which means I'm not sure I can, well, you guys can if you want to. The planning council surely isn't going to tell them it's okay to restrict parking there when it's partially in the town right of way. Nothing that we could do. But Todd, are they using this currently the space beyond the curb stop, between the curb stop and the building as a sidewalk? They are. Yeah. They'd have to, if they want to keep the sidewalk, they need to take out their landscape and build a proper sidewalk. So if the select board wanted to allow this, for example, you could say, We'll allow you to restrict your spaces if you want to reconstruct a sidewalk to town specs and, and place your landscaping. And then you can, then you're on your own property. Then you can do this without a problem. But then they've got to put walk the kids on the road, basically. No, because they would have a sidewalk. So they'd add a sidewalk. It okay, will, it will, basically, it'll be the exact same situation I have now. Instead of, instead of the curb stop and then the walking area, it'll be actual sidewalk, and then they're totally parking on their own property. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then I think the rest of it, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Mason. The, large, the rest of it's a hiring consultant to talk about how to improve uh, pedestrian safety downtown. As you know, we opened the truck route, into, well, the state opened the truck route, not us, in 2013. And the intent of that was to get trucks out of the downtown and on the truck route. And the, the, the spoils of that were supposed to be to make the downtown more pedestrian friendly. We have not touched a curb or done anything in the downtown since then. We're operating like we still have a truck route. And we still don't have a truck route. So. Some of those design things and some of the traffic routing, I'll turn it over to Mason if that's okay. Can I ask one question yes. before we go ahead? The um, ABC parking lot? Yes. Again, given the, the original design of the parking lot, this is, is not what we had. Wasn't the ABC where it was going to be an exit for the parking lot? Isn't that why they were not marked? Uh, we talked about, one of the designs talked about an exit, the parking lot exit moving to in front of Soulmate, so the loading dock, a truck could back in and load uh, all the grain or, or kegs and go back out. But that's kind of that space, yeah, that's not why it's there though. We just left it there when the bus stop was there. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was not done because the design got changed and it was not good communication. No, really it would be, if you're going to, um, Soulmate's the building, uh, it's parcel 171, so it would be like, see where ABC is on the map on page 13, your packet? It'd really be where number two and three are if you're going to correct the parking <clears throat> lot to correct the issue. Right now, they can't get their loading trucks. They can't get trucks into their loading dock because of having to, have to snake through the parking lot. No. And because the design was that there was better flow through the parking lot. Yeah. We now, everybody has to drive around where before, with that driveway that got eliminated, it, you know, that parking lot becomes a nightmare. Yeah. Eric just made the decision. Soulmate wasn't open yet. It had been a couple of years and he couldn't justify spending the extra $10,000 to close off the cover, current opening to the parking lot, kind of by MoCo, and reopening it in line with Soulmate, just that would fix the loading issue. That's not the design I remember. That's one of the designs we looked at. It's yeah. Eric just said, I can't justify the $10,000 plus. This was adding, a, was adding an entrance so that you had two. Floors. Yeah, we looked at that as well. An entrance down by the ABC? That's, yeah, that's the Correct. one I remember approving. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a shame. And there is no entrance down there at all, is yeah. there? No. No, they blocked it off. Yeah, and again, the ABC is just where you can put parking spots with just some paint right now where the bus stop is, and there's room in DE and F to put a couple, three parking spots in as well where pavement is. And if we're worried about trying to hold up a downtown development from being redeveloped based on parking, we need to make, take advantage of our existing on-street parking to get those parking spots when we can. Thank you. Brent, did you want to say? Um, the letter was uh, from Etienne, and I asked him to come in specifically, so I want to make sure that he has 
opportunity to speak if you'd like. Etienne, anything you want to add? Uh, Etienne, Hancock, Morseville. Uh, just to be clear, it's been the precedent has been that I signed the letters from the Planning Council and Todd that, that go to you all. So, um, but but Todd summarized it, it very well. I, I would point out that I believe um, is it number eight. Evaluate a broader design, traffic pattern changes within our downtown. And I just would make mention that uh, uh, the prior uh, town administrator had asked us at one point to look at mm -hmm. the intersection of Bridge Street and Portland around the Bijou because that was becoming a problem as well. And I, I believe we touched upon that here, so I just wanted to make sure that was addressed. The idea is really just that we would benefit from uh, some professional opinions of ways that we could really streamline and make it safer the downtown now that the bypass is gone. So, yeah. Just to reiterate. Yeah, thank you. I, I think this is a fabulous conversation we're having tonight. Um, I just want to say before Mason uh, steps up and begins his presentation that again, there is this overlap between item number three and four. Or is the board okay if we just let Mason go? I don't think there's any reason to break it between the two and I'm just uh, let Mason present number three and four together? No, no. Okay. Okay. Come on up, Mason. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Mason Kemmer. I live on the Port Road. Um, tonight, I'm bringing an idea for a traffic reconfiguration downtown. Um, so a little background on myself. I am a traffic design engineer for VTrans. Uh, we specifically work on intersection design. So typically traffic lights, roundabouts. Um, our biggest project right now is uh, exit 16 in Colchester for the DDI. So projects of that nature are what I deal with. Um, my presentation tonight is in no relation with VTrans. This is just my idea as a Morrisville citizen and pitching it to you guys. Um, I'm not asking for approval of these plans tonight. Uh, it's more just the start of a discussion uh, so we can work towards uh, improvements of this nature. Um, I did have one request of this evening though, and it's that I would like to see a transportation and mobility committee be created for the town. Um, I say a transportation and mobility committee and not just a bike ped committee because it's more than just biking and walking. It's how everyone navigates through the town and how we can improve the safety, equity, and efficiency of our transport transportation system as a whole. Uh, this committee could work on things like supporting uh, goals in the town plan, um, improve bike and ped safety and advocacy, organize group bike and walk events, or even uh, partner with local bike shops to organize workshops to teach bike maintenance to people of the town. Um, one other thing that this group could work on is something that Newport, Vermont is currently working on. Uh, they're trying to become a ranked bike friendly America town. Um, this is a national, it's under a national organization, um, the League of American Bicyclists, and it's just a ranked um, publicized listing of bike friendly places in the United States. Um, I believe there's four or five current cities in Vermont that are on this uh, ranking and Newport is on their way to become another one of them and Morrisville is in a great spot to become a ranked city as well. Um, it would also be greatly appreciated if someone on the select board would become a part of this committee just to relay information between the committee and the select board. So with that being said, uh, I can jump into the discussion of my proposal here. So the idea for this is a one-way town square. This would turn Portland Street, um, a section of Upper Main Street, Pleasant Street and Railroad Street all into one-way sections um, going counterclockwise around downtown. Uh, and there's five objectives of doing a reconfiguration like this. First is it creates safer streets for everybody. That's for cars, bikes, people walking, wheelchairs, strollers, anybody using the roads. Um, this should also reduce traffic congestion in town, uh, just 
to its like roundabout nature. It should keep traffic flowing easily. Um, this also invites people from the rail trail to come into town and visit our businesses and restaurants and spend money while they're here. Uh, this gives locals safe transportation options instead of just driving cars. Um, so if they didn't feel safe riding bikes or walking before, they might be willing to do so with these improvements. And lastly, this helps um, maintain the small town feel of Morrisville by mitigating the need for traffic lights, uh, specifically at Portland and Maine intersection. So um, I'll work my way around kind of explaining how all of this will work. So it all kind of, this idea all started at Bridge and Portland Street because I've talked to many people and no one likes driving through it. Um, it's really weird just having the right of way go around the turn, having a stop sign on the through. It's really blind turning around the Bijou. It's just a weird intersection. So making Portland go one way um, from Oxbow towards Main Street, um, people on Portland would have the right of way to go through or turn right onto Bridge Street. And then people coming from Bridge Street and turning right onto Portland Street would have to yield to the Portland Street traffic. So it would be like entering a roundabout basically. Um, and this would keep the flow moving easily through there, reduces the blind spot turns around the corner. Um, just would ideally flow smoothly at that intersection with less confusion of do I stop? Is it my turn? Should I wait for them to go? So moving up Portland Street to Portland and Maine intersection. Um, so there's currently 12 different turning move or 12 movements that you can make at Portland and Maine intersection. Three or four approaches, three movements at each one. You can turn right, turn left, or go straight. Um, this reconfiguration would remove the main street approach. Uh, so there would only be three approaches now and there would be only six possible movements at this intersection. So from Portland Street, you could continue, uh, you could do what you normally do, turn right, you can turn left or you can go straight onto Congress Street. From lower main street, if you were passing Pizza on Main and Black Cap and coming to the intersection, you can now go straight through to Upper Main Street or turn right onto Congress Street. You would no longer be able to turn left onto Portland. And then from Congress Street, you would only be able to make a right-hand turn onto uh, Upper Main Street. And this just reduces the number of conflicts between cars, it should alleviate the queuing, uh, people skipping their turn in the queue. Uh, and I ran some traffic models, uh, simulations, and this configuration runs more efficiently than what it's currently at. Uh, and this would also be far safer for people walking because there's one less leg of traffic to be worried about and the crossings are far shorter on those one way sections. So you have less road distance to cross. Um, so then if you follow Upper Main Street uh, one way going towards the school or the library or Route 12, uh, you come up to the Pleasant Street and Main Street intersection. From here, people who are already in the town square loop would have the right of way to continue straight towards the library or the school and would have the right of way to turn left down Pleasant Street. People who are leaving the library or school or coming down from Route 12 would have to yield to the traffic, the town square traffic. Um, and then they would only have the option to turn right down Pleasant Street. Uh, and then from Pleasant Street, you would follow traffic down the whole way to Railroad Street, where you can turn left. Um, at Railroad Street and Portland Street, you have the option to turn right to go to Oxbow Park, or you would turn left and continue your way around the traffic, the town square to wherever <coughs> you need to go. So that's uh, the gist for car traffic. Um, when making this a one-way town square, it gives you a lot of space, added space for um, bike lanes. So on Portland Street, I proposed a um, dual direction bike lane. Uh, it's very similar to what Montpelier just put in on Barry Street to connect two sections of their uh, 
their bike path along the river. Uh, and this is just a very big, open and inviting path for cyclists to come into town from the rail trail and get people from town to the rail trail. Um, along the inside of the rest of the, the town square has contraflow bike lanes. So traffic, bike traffic could go uh, clockwise around the town square. This gives cyclists the ultimate flexibility of how they want to get around town because uh, bikes always have the right to ride in the road still. So if people do feel comfortable riding with car traffic, they're welcome to go counterclockwise with the cars, or if they don't feel comfortable, they can go counterclockwise, or sorry, they can go clockwise in the bike lanes. Um, I also have bike lanes shown on Lower Main Street, which could run the whole length to the turnaround in front of Noy's house. And this would give people access to all of the businesses and restaurants along that section of road. And there's also bike lanes on Congress Street uh, with one caveat that the drainage inlets uh, along Congress Street would need replaced because currently they're very low and they're the old style drainage inlets that catch tires very easily and will send you over the handlebars. Um, so that would be one improvement that would I would like to see before bike lanes would be reinstalled on Congress Street. Um, so that is about all for the bike lanes. And then, like I said, most of the, the pedestrian improvements are just shorter crossings uh, across all of the roads because they would be one way. So you only have to worry about about 12 feet of uh, car traffic to cross instead of 24 or some, some spots in town are really wide and up to like 30 feet to cross, which takes a long time to get through. Um, and I don't recommend putting in crosswalks back at Bridge Street and Portland Street. Um, I don't like them there right now. I've never used them. I don't think they're safe being there. Um, if one were to be put in, uh, I feel like it could be okay on the Bridge Street approach, but I still wouldn't recommend it on the Portland Street crossing just too high of traffic with blind corners still. And there's plenty of other places to cross the street in town. I walk around town a lot and I've never had to cross there. Uh, and then lastly is parking, which is brought up in the planning council's um, letter to the select board. So I will, I guess I'll, I'll talk about the pleasant street parking first, which is brought up in the the letter um, and my, I did suggest at the planning council meeting for angled parking on Pleasant Street along the sidewalk across from, uh, stretching from the co-op to River Arts. Uh, as I looked into it more, um, there, there are pros and cons to doing parallel and angled parking at this spot. Uh, I didn't realize that along the front of the co-op is the only spot they have for truck deliveries. So if angle parking were the option here, uh, you'd have to push it, the start of parking back to where the co-op's sidewalk ends so they still have room for trucks to go through. You might be able to do a parallel parking spot and then angled parking. I'm not really sure if that's a thing. I would have to look into it more. Um, you could gain a few more spots going with angled parking through that section. Um, you could probably make the spots smaller than what I have them drawn as. I have seven shown here. Todd's uh, picture shows that you could fit 10 parallel parking spots there. So if you shrunk them by a few feet each, you, I'm sure you could fit a few more along there. Um, I also, it's, it's hard to make a long-term plan when it's uncertain how the, the car garage uh, is gonna be developed in the future, because I know I believe DeMars is supposed to be developing that into a commercial. Looks like Donza. Donza, sorry, not DeMars. Uh, Donza is doing supposed to be doing a commercial on the bottom with apartments on top. So that would be a factor into how you would lay out parking along that section of Pleasant Street. Um, 
So over on to Portland Street, I propose back-in angled parking. Uh, back-in angled parking is the safer alternative when you're doing any kind of angled parking, um, when you're especially on the right side of traffic, because you are backed in, you're on the left side of your car looking at traffic as it's coming to you and you just pull into traffic when there's space for you. Uh, along the main street section in front of the daycare and near the Green Dragon and the Dance Academy, I do propose uh, pull in forward parking uh, just because it runs adjacent to the bike lanes and I feel like it would be likely that cars would be backed into the bike lane obscuring the path for cyclists. Um, if something like ballards were put in or curb stops were set along those parking spots, then back in parking could be a, a valid option. But without that, I would go opt for pull in forward parking. Uh, and then also on Pleasant Street, I do show a few of the parking spots along uh, the east side, right as you enter Pleasant Street. I do think I covered up a driveway on there, so you m might not be able to get all of those parking spots, but uh, you would be able to get three or four of them there. So in this drawing I have, uh, there was a total loss of one parking spot, uh, not accounting for the, the driveway I blocked. So maybe two parking spots lost, but there's several spots along here where you could probably shrink parking in get a few extra spots. So you could probably net to zero loss in parking spots with this reconfiguration. Uh, so that is the gist for the town square plan. I guess I can open it up to questions now if anybody has them. I do. Yeah. Go ahead, Laura. Um, the, uh, one of my concerns is if you've ever been in Oxbow in the morning, mm -hmm. The semi tractor trailers file in at our yep. miles, turn around and wait. Yep. So, according to this, coming in from the bypass, they now have to do the full loop around the town square. Correct. So, that means that all the apartments that are lined are now subject to all that traffic that comes in at 6 a.m. That's a good point. Yes. That's a problem. Okay. So that's a, I'll yeah. just warn you, that's a significant yep. problem. Gotcha. Um, and, and I advise you to go down and sit. And it's amazing how they're sitting there idling, waiting for arcane miles. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they can't be smaller trucks. Yep. Um, my other concern is all this um, <clears throat> traffic coming from the school. Yes. They now too have to go the whole route Correct. around. Which, if you look at, if we look do a population study of how many, you know, I mean, Grand Mink just built 136 units, so. Yep. Ideally, they're walking. Yeah, we know how that's not going to um, Bishop Marshall, uh, you know, uh, but you look at how much people live, like, you know, Randolph Road is huge. Yeah. So, again, you're now driving all of that school traffic at 3 o'clock around the town square. Yes. So right now, they exit out. So, <clears throat> those are two kind of significant problems I see. Yep. I love the idea. I absolutely adore the idea. And it would be really great if we were able to turn that into a full green park. Um, but the way we're situated with these two huge commercial businesses mm -hmm. is an issue. So can you figure out how to fix it? <laughs> the truck one I had the truck one I had not considered. Yeah. Somebody did bring up school traffic leaving, um, which I believe I don't have traffic counts during the school year. Yeah. Um, so the volumes I ran were beginning of August, but are increased 70% from 2018 to 2023 from when I, from the numbers I gathered. So I, I, I can tell you just quickly that um, I have a friend who lives right on the corner of um, going to the hospital and Congress Street. And mm -hmm. there is, she already talks about the enormous amount of traffic that goes uh, up to the, you done the Washington Highway? Yes. Yeah. In Congress. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, so um, and currently, Congress Street, as if you've watched, uh, the Forum has become a racetrack. 
Uh, my, um, my, my wife, know. my wife works at the hospital and she, oh, so Washington yeah. High. Yeah. Yeah. and then, and because of the enormous amount of traffic to the hospital. So again, the school, if you're, you know, if they don't want to go the whole route and they start going, taking, you know, t uh, roads, you've now put an enormous amount <laughs> of traffic. And yeah. if you've gone down Washington right. highway and try to make that left onto, uh, Randolph, Randolph. road, uh, it's a death trap. Yeah. Also dead yep. So that's another concern is kind of, you know, enticing people to go, uh, we have to fix it. Yeah, yeah. So forcing people driving through neighborhoods. Yeah, traffic would definitely adjust differently to this. Um, yeah. You could look into larger studies to see how this, yeah. this might impact yeah, traffic good. flow. For the school traffic in particular, um, people were complaining about how long they sit at portland and maine intersection during drop off yeah. and i wasn't able to run a simulation for it but i do believe this should alleviate that issue because all of the traffic leaving the school coming to the portland intersection is no longer at the portland intersection they would be going down pleasant street and working around and the portland intersection traffic would be turning and they just wouldn't be conflicting with each other anymore. Uh, it might queue up behind from people coming up to the leaving and wanting to go onto Lower Main Street. Um, but people might just start taking Bridge Street and going straight to the bypass instead of working through the town again. Go ahead, Drake. Lots of, lots of I'd like to give the board a yeah, chance for sure. to speak first. And I think Mason, I, I agree with, with Laura. This, this is food for a lot of thought, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it greatly. I think the question around the school is, I hate to say it this way, but how do you drain the school traffic out of the school in the morning? And does it flow better by giving them all the right hand turn? Because yeah. there's another problem that backs up. It's the 15A yeah. and yeah. Elmore Street coming into an odd yeah. intersection yeah. and Copley Avenue. So now you get three of them all kind of For trying sure. to share the same traffic. And that all backs up as, as Portland and Maine block up. For sure. And, and how do you drain that? So if you could do some kind of study that shows mm -hmm. is that drain, does that drain? And that's not the right term for it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. More quickly mm -hmm. that way, then you help three roads flow better, 12, 15A and Copley Avenue. Mm -hmm. And that's a maybe a half an hour, 45 minute problem in the morning and similar in the afternoon. The rest of the day, that intersection is not a big deal, but it is a big deal in those windows. And I think gaining community support, maybe board support around how does that get addressed would be a, a really nice thing to know. And if you could say to the community, look, we've done the flow and you could get around this, this uh, loop uh, that this has created the one way loop faster than standing and sitting in traffic for 15 minutes, wait for your turn to jump in whenever you can, or somebody's nice enough to let you in. Uh, that might be really helpful to get gain community support for that aspect anyways. For sure. Well, other point with the trucks is a whole different can of yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, kind of, it kind of also defeats the purpose of the by, I shouldn't say defeats the purpose of the bypass. I'm curious how this can work, but yeah. people, if we have trucks, they have two options to get into town to do RK miles or even, you know, 10 railroad or guys farm and yard right now they can come in through town, which again, kind of messes with the, the, op, the, the bypass. And then the other one is Bridge Street, where they go in and they come out on the same road. They don't, those trucks don't hit the center of town. But this design will put them in the center of town, as Laura says. My other concern, question is, like emergency vehicles, if the police are to access the north end of town, I, that puts them in a police or fire. Kind of, that also adds something to me to, that I think we should look at, too. Because you won't have access, you won't have easy, if, especially if something happens during a busy traffic school get out, you're going to have this whole corridor is going to be packed with cars, guaranteed. So if you have mm -hmm. emergency vehicles on one way road, they can't pass. Whereas now you can, you can shed traffic and let emergency vehicles through. For sure. It would, it would to, to that point, it would, it would probably move ambulance traffic coming out of the bond by the hospital off of Congress Street, which is the way the drivers normally come down and go off Congress Street to right. go and come down Maple Street because then they could come into this traffic pattern but more quickly. But hopefully they don't hit 
but if they hit traffic, yeah, then, yeah. then it's all yep. done. That's mm -hmm. just yep. a concern that I have with that. Yeah. Chris? So, Mason, um, you know, first and foremost, thank you for, um, you know, walking down this path. Um, it's nice to have your expertise and your insight based on your um, skills uh, to start this conversation. Um, I am looking at this as a what if. You know, this is, uh, you are not our hired consultant. Uh, Correct. I don't think that it's fair to put direction on you in terms of what the next steps are. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you're approaching this from, we want to think outside the box. This is a possibility. But furthermore, you made it very clear that you're encouraging the municipality to engage a consultant um, to take a look at these ideas and some of the conversations that we're having and potentially work with you on some of the, you know, some of the suggestions that you've made here. Um, I just wanted that to be stated because it's not our role tonight to say to you, well, you know, we, we like this, but we want you to solve this problem. We want you to solve this problem. Correct. That's yeah. not yeah. the agenda tonight, I don't think. Um, but I think that this is a, a wonderful start to a conversation that's probably long overdue. Thanks. Well, I'm going to echo what everyone else has said and just say, yeah, I, I, when I first looked at this Saturday, I think it was, I was looking at the packet, I was saying, wow, this is, this is great. This is, what a great conversation for the town, what a great conversation for the village. And I can see, uh, I, I can see a lot of, a lot of positive coming from this. So just a couple things just to reiterate. So at the corner of Main Street and Portland Street, there would be no light. We could get rid of the light. Correct. Yeah. 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 And so that flow, and I totally agree. Schools was on my issue, and it was you know going up to the school at seven thirty in the morning is one thing. Coming down from the school at seven thirty in the morning is another thing, and that needs to be sorted out. But not having that light there is really going to get rid of that traffic in Lower Main Street for sure. So it, it would still be stop signs there, but it would. Okay. Uh, you could, at some point, you, if it worked well, Congress Street could maybe switch to a yield, so they're just looking to that traffic and don't have to stop and can flow a little quicker mm -hmm. into there. Would there be a stop sign on Lower Main Street? Yes. Going up the hill? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then going to the next intersection, the intersection of uh, Pleasant and uh, Upper Main Street there. So you're going to have one-way traffic coming up there, and you've got angled parking on the left-hand side. Would there be a left lane for those turning left? No, there is not enough space to put an adequate left turning lane right. due to the ball bout for the pedestrians at the mid-block crossing. Right. Um, you can only get like two cars in there, and, and the through traffic still can't get around them. Okay. Um, but I, in the simulations I ran, most of the traffic flowed pretty pretty easily through there. And our simulations that we do run are on the extreme conservative side of how people drive. Um, so like the gaps they need are much greater than the average gaps that people do need. Right. Um, not everything runs like the simulation, yeah. obviously, but uh, from what I ran, it, it looked like it should flow smoothly through there. And that kind of goes with my, my next question, the traffic coming down the hill from the school, mm -hmm. that same intersection, you mentioned that they would yield to the traffic coming up the hill. Would there be a stop sign there for them? Nope, just a yield. Okay. So if no yeah. one is turning left or no one's coming, they can just make the turn right. And for the instance with the school traffic, I think most of the people would be going straight towards the school and wouldn't be turning left to Pleasant Street. So most of the people coming down from the school would just have free flow to turn right down to Pleasant Street. And yeah. like that's the thought of it, being able to flow smoothly during school traffic. The triangles outside of the library are a whole different story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a little outside of the scope of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of the village square and I, I really like the idea of welcoming the bikers into town. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all watched the rail trail going in years ago, and it's here now. Morristown is like perfectly positioned to take advantage of the rail trail. We are right on the halfway. We are right on the midpoint, and yep. uh, 
a Rocktoberfest I was set up uh, with the wellness committee at their tent and was just doing some public outreach and stopped a couple on their bikes who were from Quebec who were stopping into town. It's hard to say if they would have came into town if it wasn't the day of Rocktoberfest, but I, I don't know. I'd say it'd be less likely that they stopped to, to visit. But. And we are in a unique position in that that rail trail is going right through our village and mm -hmm. that isn't happening to too many other villages. No. And uh, we, we ought to take advantage of that. And the last thing I'll just say is I've, I spent some time up in Newport and uh, mm -hmm. Newport has become a bike friendly area. I know I bike through there quite a bit and mm -hmm. you can see the, the bikers going into town and businesses taking advantage of it. Yeah. But, Thank you very much. I'm just going to say on a funny note, uh, you know, UPS mm -hmm. has all the drivers only turn right because they, they just know it's true. They did a huge, huge research and they can save an enormous amount of gas if the routes are designed to go right because if you stop, you have to wait. I mean, it's true. That's they funny. save millions of dollars. Wow. So their truck routes are all designed to turn right. Interesting. <laughs> that's why I'm just looking at like, this. No, just, that's just a funny thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to open it up to questions from the audience. If you want to come up to the microphone. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. Well, Mason, you did a good job there. And uh, um, you only lost me once. <laughs> so we're coming down, coming down the, the high school hill, and you turn right on Pleasant Street. Right. Where's that traffic gonna go? Down to Railroad Street to turn left and then come around. Well, how's that gonna work? Because that's you actually going into a parking lot. On Railroad Street? Well, you got 10 Railroad there and you got the laundromat there. Yeah. Well, it'd be one way now, so there'd be more space on each side for both of them. That's quite a bit of traffic for that area between the two businesses. Yeah. It's, it's a great point, Tony. It's, it's tight in there. And I'm just saying, uh, I go down there to get away from traffic, but... <laughs> <clears throat> this is wishful thinking, but boy, it would, it would be awful nice if we could go from Pleasant Street straight across to Bridge Street there, but there are a few buildings in the way and so because we don't know property do with, there that we don't own. Because we don't know what to do with the Oxbow, is there any way we could build a road around 10 Railroad? And come around the back side there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All those. Yeah. But you're only talking one way traffic. Yeah. It's pretty so you don't need you don't need a twenty foot track. Yeah. 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 It gets pretty narrow between RK Miles and that river too. Oh, I don't I don't get on then yeah. just just throwing it out there. But it's great, Mason, it's great food for thought. I mean it's just what a wonderful little template to begin with. You know, it may not be perfect, but it's, uh, it's yeah. better than we had. Yeah. Starts the conversation. Yeah. For sure. We appreciate it. Um, I do have a few more uh, points to, to hit here. Unless anybody else have any questions on how this would work. Jerry Throne. Um, I just have one comment. Uh, that I think uh, maybe you've considered, but the, the traffic when it, when it comes around uh, from RK Miles or, or from 10 Railroad, um, would anybody that wants to get to Route 100, say go to Stowe or, or go further north, they'd have the opportunity to go down Bridge Street Correct. and hit the bypass mm -hmm. rather than coming through town, uh, Jersey Heights and all that. It's a more direct route. So, have you considered uh, that that might reduce the uh, traffic flow coming through the center of town? Yeah, that was, I think if this were implemented, um, people would learn to figure out more efficient ways through town and might not go directly through town. So like if trips were unnecessarily coming through downtown, they might switch to a more direct route to Route 100 and get out of the center of town uh, with less travel through the town square. Okay, that was just mine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. 
Uh, so the few other things I, I wanted to, to leave you all with is if a plan like this were to be pursued, um, there are grant options. Uh, I know of at least two through VTrans, and I'm sure there's plenty more out there to, to fund this, which this uh, configuration in particular would not be very expensive to do. Uh, it would be all pavement markings and a few new signs, uh, which none of it cost very much in the grand scheme of things. Um, so for the funding, there is one small scale grant through VTrans that is a 50-50 split between the grant and the town. Um, when I talked to a few people at VTrans, they said that would be the route to go for something of this nature. Um, they're pretty quick to apply for and quick to get the funding back on. Um, the other option is the larger bike ped grant program, which is an 80-20 split. Um, town pays 20%, state or federal pays 80%. Uh, this, uh, this grant though is kind of a two part application. The first part is uh, for a scoping study, study to be done, which would, which they recommend a minimum of $40,000 to do. Um, this is what Montpelier has just done and they, I included a link in on one of my pages on uh, that takes you to their the scoping study that they just had completed a big 60 page report on whole big long range plan for how to improve the town's traffic. Um, so you apply for the scoping study and after the scoping study you reapply to get the construction funding. Uh, this would be a great option to consider for the town as a big whole picture. Uh, this could look into the intersection at the school in front of the library to alleviate that hmm. issue. Um, I, I would assume a roundabout would be the, the ideal solution there. Uh, this could even go out to um, where Bridge Street and Historic 100 meet alternate 100 to get people safer, uh, more safely across from town to the outdoor recreation areas like Beaver Meadows, Morristown Forest, and Caddy Falls on the west side of Alternate 100. Uh, and this could expand into like uptown um, Morrisville uh, to make improvements there and even out onto Elmore Road uh, to bring some traffic calming uh, elements onto that road is people come into town because it goes to 25, but people don't drive 25 because it is designed like a 50 mile an hour road. It's nice and wide to go fast on. Um, and then as uh, the town, I'm aware that you guys are working on getting downtown designation again. So I'm sure there'd be another other grant options and funding sources uh, after that is regained. Um, and then just some logistics of if this plan or something similar were to be implemented. Um, Portland and Main Street are class one roads, so the state maintains the pavement on them, but the town can do whatever design they would like on it. Um, so it is ideal to repaint, uh, uh, put new paint on freshly paved roads, uh, but those two roads will not be repaved for the, until they're not scheduled for 12 more years. So be quite a while to make any kind of adjustments on that. Um, you can remove pavement markings off of the pavement. It can sometimes cause confusion though, because you can see the etching where the markings are removed. Um, for this idea in particular, uh, the parking spots would line up with the double yellow lines on the road. So I don't think there would be much confusion of where you should be driving. Uh, all of the other markings would be out of the travel lanes and either in the bike lanes or in parking spots. So I don't think it would be too much of an issue if, if markings were just removed and painted over. Uh, and then obviously markings, water-based markings, uh, which is the most cost-effective solution are need maintained every year, at least for vehicle traffic. Bike lanes might be every three or four years or several years instead of every year, just because of the lower traffic impact. Uh, they don't have cars driving over them, so they don't get worn nearly as fast. Um, 
And then if a design like this were to be implemented um, and widely accepted and enjoyed by the town, uh, you could look into more permanent solutions like curbs that add vertical separation between the travel lanes and the bike lanes. So markings wouldn't have to be redone there every year and it's far safer because it gives a actual barrier between bikes and cars. Um, the next two pages on page six and seven of uh, my packet, page 19 and 20 of the whole packet are just some of the comments that we received at uh, Rocktoberfest. Um, like I said, we were, uh, the ad hoc wellness committee was kind enough to let me join them and support this idea. Um, and we received uh, really positive feedback on this idea. People want to be able to bike more safely. They want their kids to be able to ride bikes and walk to school safely, especially when the village doesn't have access to buses uh, anymore. Um, the main concerns were the intersections at the school, which this was outside of the scope. Um, another one that was brought up was Hutchins Street, as people would probably start using that as a cut through, which may not be an issue, but for the people living on Hutchins Street in the apartments, it would be an issue. So uh, you could just put a, you know, only local traffic or some sort of sign like that. But as we discussed earlier, those signs are uh, suggested for a lot of people. Uh, they might not follow what the signs say. Um, so one solution would be blocking one of or other of one end or the other of that street and making it a one way in, one way out. Um, I talked with one of my coworkers and he said he thinks Pleasant Street would be the side you would would block off. So you have easy access to the businesses on Portland side and it keeps it quieter on the apartment building side of things. Um, but you are all welcome to look through all the, the rest of the comments. There aren't a ton of other noteworthy ones just besides the usuals of you know, safer and people would like to see this so they could bike more safely. Uh, and then the last few pages are just a few sections out of the town plan, uh, which I highlighted certain points that this plan in particular directly would improve upon or meet the goals that the town has set in the plan. Uh, so I think that is all that I have for you this evening. Thanks for listening to my presentation um, and for all of your feedback. Uh, I hope to help the town move forward with something of this nature, work on improvements to help traffic and people get out on bikes and walk more around town. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Mason. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the audience? Okay. We're going to move on then. Thank you very much, Mason. That was Thank that was very good. Doctor, question. Yeah, before, go ahead. Before you move on, is this select board going to follow up on the planning council letter, or is it what's the next step on the, some of the things in the letter, the low hanging fruit stuff? That's a great question, Todd. Um, yeah. I've got an agenda item I need to report back on tomorrow. So what, should yes. I tell, what shall I tell them? We have a town manager that can take a look at you know, some of these suggestions and decide uh, where we go next. I think that that's a uh, management, uh, mm -hmm. management uh, task and um, you know, we certainly can share our ideas, but um, based on what we have for budget and uh, Talking with the highway crew, I think that that is a town manager perspective. And I would just add to that, Todd, you know, you and Et Etienne's letter, but your letter speaks to those eight different points. We also have that parking study from a year and a half ago, two yes. years ago. There's some things in there that maybe, maybe we want to go back and take a look at again. Mm -hmm. But kind of throw that into the same the same pot. Okay. Great. So I think what Chris is suggesting, and it looks like what the board's suggesting is, uh, yeah, we're we're interested in this, and okay. there's some great points in here, and I think we need to act on some of these, if not all of them. Sounds like, sounds good. I'll vote for it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, one more thing for me too. Um, 
about starting the, the committee for transportation and mobility. Is that a select board approval or is that a on to Brent decision? Ultimately, I would say that's probably going to be a select board decision. I don't know if the select board's ready to act on this tonight and okay. go forward with it, but ultimately, I think we would put that committee together and one member of this committee could join join that committee. Um, but that might be a good good comment, good question for for you to bring to Brent, and we can uh, discuss this at a future meeting. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again. So moving on to number five, uh, discuss the Morristown Development Fund changes. So in your packet, the board has uh, a lot of documents regarding the restructuring of the Morristown Development Committee. And uh, I know I read through this and uh, I'm sure you all have too. I don't think we need to take any action tonight, but it's worth noting that this is something that we don't want to let fester either. I think the Morristown Development Fund is looking for us to approve these changes uh, soon. Not tonight, but looking for us to make these changes soon. I think tonight is a chance for us to provide some feedback on the documents that we've read. Um, I know I have one comment, and uh, overall I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was very, very good, actually. And um, so uh, I guess I would open up to the board and let them, let you folks uh, offer any suggestions here that we might want to take back to the MDF and let them um, think about those suggestions and modify the packet and bring the packet back to us for a final decision. So um, any, any thoughts? Yeah, um, uh, in the um, asset transfer agreement, um, the second whereas um, in that um, on the first page, there's a typo there. Um, last um, sentence of persons who are of low and moderate income, it just says AR. So um, on my copy, it yep. shows a typo there. Um, the other question, I didn't have any other questions about the language, but um, just for general knowledge, are there any outstanding loans or defaults currently with the Morristown Development Fund that we need to be aware of in this asset transfer? There, there's no outstanding default. There, there was a rather large default previously, um, and there's no outstanding loans. Okay. So that's one of the reasons um, I understand this has been in the works for about two years. So, you know, the MDF has reviewed documents uh, several times. Uh, the MDF is not compliant with state statutes as it is. So, um, whether you deliberate during a select board meeting or on your own and give any feedback individually, I can share that with uh, the MDF. And I'd like to see this keep moving so that we can continue the process, get an RFP out there for a, a lending organization to help <clears throat> run this program and then get these funds allocated to businesses that are both worthwhile and seem to be not of too great credit risk. I just, I'm on this board, um, for those who weren't around, um, but the last time this there was a loan was probably around like 2016-17. So this money has been sitting there inactive and then the fund is to um, for development to help businesses. So the committee is very anxious to move forward. There's quite a bit of money sitting there. Uh, there's a lot of interest in town uh, for this. So I'm just uh, encouraging the board to be very expedient in getting this going, um, this you know current situation. Uh, if we can get uh, you know significant amount of money to our community to get businesses who are struggling and or looking for improvements and to synthesize new businesses, it's you know 
we really need to do this so that I just this is not a casual I just I, I just want to put out there that um, to have a huge chunk of money that we haven't you have it loaned out in almost eight years I think that's what it is um, the that last default is what triggered all of this and uh, and it's just we, you know pandemic and everything we got caught up so we're and then management change so uh, I just want to put a little spark under your well, light a little fire there for you. Yeah. That's my understanding too, Laura, yeah. that you know they're looking for us to act on this rather quickly. And uh, it's also my understanding that there might be a few businesses out there waiting for this to happen so that they can put their applications in. Yeah, so there we go. I'll just stop. Uh, go ahead, George. I was just going to say so, what is the approximate value of the fund value right now? I always come into these meetings knowing that there's going to be an answer that I won't give. <laughs> and it's usually, it's usually me. <laughs> no? I know what it is. Uh, and I just had the financial sheet like last week. What is it? Um, it's Six. close to five hundred thousand okay. dollars. Okay. It's 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 uh, partial. Uh, it's partially sitting in Edward Jones, very secure, uh, and part of it is um, rotating CDs um, that. Uh, if Sarah were here, she was explaining that we haven't locked in long term because you, you know, know we don't want to lock it. So it's the rolling it every month. So that there's also the need to really kind of uh, right. get this moving because we're in this like perpetual, you know, hey, hang, hang, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. My only comment um, is in regards to the terms. Um, the, the length of the terms that individuals have on this board. So right now there's five members of the of the uh, MDF. Uh, one of the select board members is a member and that was that's Laura right now. Yeah. And then there's four other members. And the proposal is to keep reappointing them for three year terms. Yet there's four people and I thought, no, oh, that's kind of kind of weird math and how that would work. And so in most years and for the first few years there would be one new board member coming on. But then all of a sudden, I just work through it in the seventh year, and then in the tenth year, and then in the thirteenth year from now, there's going to be two board members coming on. So my simple suggestion is, rather than making them three-year terms, make them four-year terms, and don't have to worry about any of that confusion. Um, I think it's to match the select board because we don't have a four-year term in select board. Right, but I'm thinking on here, just make everyone, make everyone. Once they're once those four members are there, just make them renew every four years. But you you still so that there's only board member, so only, yeah. only ever one new member coming on instead of some years one new member yeah, and some years two. I don't have math, but the, it just seems know. confusing that down the road there's going to be one new member, one new member, one, and then all of a sudden two new members, and then one new member, one yeah, new member, and then two I new have members. To look at it. And I, my understanding was because of the the longest term of the select board is three years. So if you have somebody on two, the select board member that's only two years to do it. So that right. that kind of throws a wrench in it. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, but you've got a four-year term right off the bat here too. Yeah, so Who does? Oh. This proposal would have a four-year oh. term right off the bat. So it's just a way yeah. to simplify. No, that's, that's yeah. All. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's, we haven't really discussed it. So we'll, yeah. yeah. Um, the loan program guidelines. Um, the uh, question on uh, page 31, first page of that program guideline, talks about responsibilities and authority and in the fourth sentence, um, loan is made to the MDF Loan Advisory Committee will review financial information periodically. And then on page 34, it talks about uh, the fact that the um, loan recipient would need to provide copies of their annual tax returns. I think it would be good to have continuity between those two things. And I think quite frankly, um, um, because this is, uh, this is uh, the revolving loan is to uh, give businesses a leg up that may not be able to get conventional lending from a larger institution. Um, it would be good for the loan advisory um, committee to have annual um, financial information so there's consistency between page one and page three. The, uh, let's see if I add some other notes here. Um, 
I think that it's good um, um, that um, guarantees of personal assets or assets of any related affiliate of the borrower may be utilized as, uh, if the applicant's business assets are inadequate. I think that's a really good um, part of the security of the loan. Um, and I think that uh, generally loan terms will be for no more than five to 10 years. That's a good process too. And that loan shall be limited to 10% of the total balance of the MDF funds, um, which I strongly agree with. Um, so the other question I have is, is that they're talking about the fact that uh, closing costs can get rolled into the loan. Mm -hmm. um, from your experience, um, are closing costs on loans like this of any significant expense? Uh, we're asking for, I believe, $100 for review. An application fee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we haven't gone out to an RFP. Right. Yeah. Um, so, 100 bucks. So, you know, I know SBA loans are often rolled up into the okay. the loan. Um, but that's, that's something that I noted, like whether or not, because we haven't gone out for RFP yet, whether or not $100 would, would cover the costs. And if not, would the MDF funds need to be applied? And uh, having to look into the you know, the language to see if that would even be authorized. Yeah, so anyways, I, I agree. I, I think that's a question that um, I'd like to have answered. Yeah. And I, I will say the the application fee was up partially because now we're, we'll have, once we have a, a bank involved, um, the process was to, to only get really serious um, folks who were, who were interested to, because from everybody's time and the bank's time that, you know, um, we want to get very serious applications that this is just like, oh, I need some money. Um, so that uh, that's that's why it's $100. Right, but I mean, it needs to, the loan application and the RFP, what the lending, the lending review uh, yeah. bank will have needs to be congruent here. Uh, absolutely. Because yeah. Um, yeah. it shouldn't come out of any other pocket. No, understood. Yeah. That's why yeah, we were hoping for, we've all been looking at this for a while, so it's nice to have new eyes on it, because you, know, you, you just don't see it sometimes. So. Other comments? Richard? No. Okay. Good. Go ahead. So, um, I'll look into the four year with, with MDF. And uh, make sure there's no reason not to do that. Chris, uh, can we have a sidebar at some point so you can just show me specifically your notes to make sure I caught everything about your sure. comments? Yeah. Good. And this might come back to us at the next meeting? Would it come back? Would it turn around that quickly? That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, good. <clears throat> good. Because we can't send out the RFP until this is good. Nice. Right. Get her done. Okay, uh, ready to move on? Old business, we have none. Approve the warrants. I would move to approve the warrants. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by George to approve the warrants. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Community comments. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. So inquiring minds want to know how many times you got dunked at that Duncan booth. <laughs> Plenty. <clears throat> Plenty. And let me tell you, the water was, by the time I got in there, people in this town need to take showers and baths because it was pretty disgusting when I got in there. I think it was all from you when I got in after you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you were after me. I did take a bath or a shower before I went there. But yeah. I just want you to know that 
you were on my radar, but I couldn't go. <laughs> okay. Well, you would have had to have been the target, though, Tony. Well, played pretty good baseball in the Marine Corps, so there you go. Well, I took one shot for this guy. I had the target. got me in. <laughs> You were on my target. So. Okay. Well, there'll but be I was at the Hot Rod show instead. Yeah. In Essex, and I carried a porcupine off the stagecoach road with me, Brent. Oh. So who is going to pick up the roadkill? And it don't happen every. It's it was bad. There was five of them out there, but I couldn't get around it, and my thirty eight sits pretty low, and I felt it in my feet. So I, I just think they're, I don't know. How does it work? I don't know. Yeah, so you had uh, texted me last week. Uh, essentially, police or highway can move things off of the road and just place it to the side. And then um, we contact um, state and Jeez. they have, uh, they, they may or may not take it off the side of the road because there's a lot of roadkill out there right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was, <clears throat> there was littered. There was five of them. There was three raccoons and two porch monkeys. I mean, porcupines. And, and uh, I got, I got one of the porcupines. I couldn't get around it. Yeah. So, so uh, he, he rode with me. I've noticed a lot of roadkill since this summer. Um, but you know, highway and police will move them off of the road. Well, I'm sure they do what they can, but it was like, this was Friday morning, so I know they don't work Fridays, so. They will. Larger, lar if you, there's a deer on Katie's Falls Road a couple months ago, and I called the police department, and I was told to call the sheriff's department to get, to talk with someone at state police, so I ended up talking with someone at Willis. It's, it's just, just like it's. Because it's, it's a, it's a uh, traffic hazard at that point. Yeah, but I, I don't know if it's something in the case of porcupines, if a game warden's going to run out and scoop up a porcupine. Well, if it's on the road, uh, if it's on a town road, either highway or police, when they, when they notice it, will push it off. And then, yeah. but they'll just put it on the side of the road. And then. Just, just to end of the conversation, they stayed there until like Monday morning and they were like <clears throat> all over. But just keep it in mind. Okay. I think Thank you. Finds a road quill. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to hit it. You know? So I went over it and I took it with me. <laughs> Other comments? Okay. Hearing none. The schedule. Now, so the upcoming schedule we have. Uh, a couple of special select board meetings. So Wednesday of this week, we have a special uh, select board special meeting, and we're going to suggest that we have it here at the town office, given the uh, attendance last time, and also given the issues with technology and audio. So if that's uh, okay with the board. Still going to start at 6. We're still going to start at 6 o'clock. We'll have it at the town office. And next Tuesday, we have another select board special meeting also scheduled for the wing center. So I would suggest that if we're going to have that meeting to have it at the town office. We did talk originally about that being a tentative meeting, that being the third of, of three meetings. Uh, do we want to leave that on the schedule and or and do we want to leave that on the schedule? And uh, well, we, we, we have a couple of choices. We can eliminate it now, we can leave it on the schedule, or I guess we can wait till Wednesday. Well, we did talk about this today. We can cancel this meeting whenever, but you know, we want to, if we do cancel it, we want to publicize the canceling of it um, because next Monday is a holiday, the 14th. So that creates a, a little bit of a, an issue as well. I mean, my, my own feeling is this has been about education. It's about, been about trying to get the word out in town about these articles. So if anything, I guess I'm leaning towards having these meetings. And you know, if we show up, sorry, Laura, but if we, sh if we show up next Tuesday and nobody's here, well, at least we've given people the opportunity, given the townspeople the opportunity to, to come and talk. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, well, 
in general, you're saying I'm, my concern is the balance are not out yet still. So that was part of the problem from before. So uh, if they go out tomorrow and we have them then, you know, so I'm actually, I'm wondering if we should have the ninth and just go for the 15th. I, I know we probably can't do that, but if the, with the small turnout, we all uh, talked about that once people get the ballots, so then they're going to start questioning, but are, are they going to have it by Wednesday night? So, so we should do both. I yeah. guess we're going to have to do yeah. both. Yeah, yeah. I we think can't cancel yeah. I think we have to. Yeah, I think so. That's a good point. I think we have to. Yeah. The only thing that the town clerk's office is saying, saying right now is that people should have their ballots by the 16th. Well, that's, that's, that's mandated. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, right. right. That's they, should have it. Right. they should have it by the 16th. Whether they get them later this week or not, I, I'm not, not right. certain. I, I think at the point potential of us coming to an empty meeting or the same people who came before just to represent, I think we should hold both meetings. And yeah. We made our, we've done our good, our good faith effort. If I agree. they come, they come, and if they don't, because they've either answered it or are happy with voting without our information, and and the website continues to grow. The, the more information is getting posted. Does do we have any kind of a counter to know how many people are accessing the website? Yes, that's a great question, George. You just looked at Google Analytics the other day. Oh yeah. She Microphone. Sorry. That's okay. No, um, so I signed up the website for Google Analytics when we went to the new website. And I just looked at it the other day and we had a huge surge of people over the last few months on the website. So if you want, I can get some information to Brent and he can have it available to you folks for another meeting. And let me keep drilling down. Is yeah. it just getting to our website or going to which links? I, it will tell me where they've been. Yeah. That would be yeah. really, I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled that you did that, Judy. And now it gives us another sense of are people not coming because we've had 200 people go to the link, right, so to speak, right. or the link has got much activity and the room is getting the same people all the time. I don't know what yeah. we do with that information, but it, it, I think it tells us something one way or another. Well, I can um, figure it out. I mean, uh, I, I can help you with that. I, I live by Google Analytics. Um, it, it's an amazing software because it can tell you uh, how people got there, where it came from, did it Google, how did they find the link, uh, it can tell you how many pages they went through to get there, did they go direct or did they bought through everything, it will tell you uh, how much time they spent on it, which is killer, did they hit and mm -hmm. run or did they, um, mm -hmm. and I appreciate you getting this up yeah. there and you offering to so it sounds to me like we will have both of these special meetings then. Right. And both I, of them here. Just to add, if, um, because when people get their ballots, if we don't have that second meeting and they get their ballots and all of a sudden, you know, there's nowhere to get the answers. It right. Will, you yeah. Know, yeah. So, yeah. We have to do it. so moving along here. So Monday, October 21st is our next regularly scheduled select board meeting, 530 here, of course. And then we have another informational meeting, which is by statute on the 28th. That will also be in this room at 5.30. And then uh, again, we canceled the November 4th meeting. So, F, so our next regularly scheduled select board meeting would be the 18th. Okay. Any questions, comments on the rest no. of that? Okay. Any other business? None. I would. And it was um, Rocktoberfest. And I thought that was important to know. Rocktoberfest was where we saw all the engagement on our website, which I thought was just, I saw a huge surge that day. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so anyhow, so I just don't really know how to read it all, but I mean, we have I, it. I, I love that. Oh, nice. It's a lot of table Oh, yeah. And a lot of contact I would. Sorry, Tony. 
which is important. I if they're finding this. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. aye. Say aye. That would be unanimous. Thank you, folks. Thank you, audience. Thank you, board.